It is the progenitor of the Infinite Stream novel, and is also adapted from the most popular adult-grade manga in Japan. That year, it cost 4 billion yen to restore as much as possible of the original in the imagination of those wild and crazy. The story begins with a drunken man falling on the subway tracks and a man who is brave enough to help him onto the platform. But he is in a crisis. The subway behind him is whistling when Korono, on the platform, recognizes that the man is his childhood friend, Taito. He quickly lent a helping hand, but the thin man fell. Soon, the oncoming subway crashed into them, but the next second, they should be dead, but somehow appeared in a closed room. There are some other strangers in the room, in addition to the other side of a huge black ball. At that moment, several lasers shot up from the black ball, and a naked woman was printed in front of everyone's eyes. The eager Kato rushed to clothe her and then stopped a gangster who wanted to make a move. And just when everyone was wondering what the hell this place was, the black ball once again moved. The text on the screen told everyone that this was the space of death and that everyone here was dead in reality, and that they needed to complete the missions it issued if they wanted to continue living. Soon the first mission appeared. Their goal was to kill the green onion shown on the screen. Then the black ball suddenly popped open, and inside were the weapons it had prepared for everyone in a box with their names on it. Korono curiously opened the box with his name and found that it was a set of silly cosplay battlesuits. In addition to the shirtless woman Kishimoto obediently put on the battlesuit. Others still do not dare to change into the shameful suit. As the black ball opened the mission countdown, everyone's body once again disappeared into thin air. Then they were transported to an empty street. Here is their mission space this time. They soon spotted Green Onion not far away. Several people quickly surrounded him, and when they were still surprised at the appearance of the Green Onion, the Green Onion Kid directly spit attack. This scene will directly enrage them, panicked. The Green Onion Kid was forced into a garage by them, with nowhere to run. He began to beg for mercy and even offered his sweet onions, but they still didn't hesitate to shoot. Green Onion Kid was killed at the same time. A bundle of onions also fell on the ground. It turns out that he is the target of this mission and also the father of Green Onion Kid. Looking at his son being brutally killed, the furious man directly cut off one of the legs of the gangster, who was still aggressive. Then he lifted him again. This cruel and bloody scene scared everyone in the place. By the time the late Corona arrived at the garage, only Kato was left alone in the garage. When Green Onion's father was ready to do it, Kishimoto wearing a battlesuit, knocked him away, and he realized that the ugly battlesuit could make the body strengthen. But the next second Green Onion but unscathed from the wall, still in a daze they were directly by a slap. Then the Green Onion father set eyes on Corona. In the nick of time, a rope suddenly came and locked Green Onion father in place. And then a human figure gradually appeared on the wall. Nishi, who has the ability of invisibility, is also one of the players in the Shinigami space. But he is a veteran of many missions. After he easily solved the Green Onion Father, the mission was completed. And the group was transported back to the Reaper space. This is also a characteristic of the Reaper space. Just like this uncle who was lucky enough to have one breath left. No matter how serious the injuries are, they can be healed instantly upon return, but the others who died in the mission will not be able to return completely. These avatars on the screen are the people who have failed in past missions. Then the mission began to score. A lone killed Green Onion Nishi has accumulated to 79 points. Soon after, back in reality for a short rest. Everyone was once again transported to the dead space, and this time the room also added three new members. The black ball showed that the target of this mission was Tanaka Seijin, and with the lesson learned from the last time, everyone quickly put on their battle suits, but the two who had not yet slowed down were the first to be teleported, and just as the child cried out for his grandmother, he inadvertently knocked over Tanaka Seijin's radio. So when Corona was transported next, he saw two dead bodies, and even more tragically, Tanaka Seijin was right in front of him, he immediately tried to shoot, but the teleportation was not yet complete, and the laser from Tanaka Seijin's mouth was about to be fired. At the last second, when the teleportation was completed, Korono pulled the trigger simultaneously, the collision of the two energies sent him flying, and Tanaka Seijin's radio was destroyed. Furious, he immediately launched a second attack, just when Korono thought he was sure to die. Tanaka Seijin but changed the target. Stealthy Nishi was blown away by a cannon. Tanaka Seijin, who was not yet relieved, disguised as Astro Boy and added a fatal attack, knocking Nishi heavily into the parking lot. Under the attack of numerous small fists, Nishi's battlesuit was soon broken. At the critical moment, Kato fell from the sky to save him. During the fight, he inadvertently opened the battlesuit berserk mode. 
With the strength provided by the battle suit, he strangled Tanaka's siege indirectly, but at this time Nishi still died of his wounds. However, the mission continued as Tanaka's siege and suddenly woke up and knocked Kato away, aiming the laser from his mouth at Kishimoto again. After Kato saved Kishimoto, Kurono became Tanaka Seijin's next target. He punched him numerous times, and Kurono, who was in pain, went into rage mode and knocked Tanaka Seijin away with a single punch. The situation was reversed instantly, as Kurono, having tasted the head, knocked Tanaka Seijin from outside the car to inside. But in the small space, he was once again pinned down by Tanaka Seijin. At the last moment, Kurono picks up the dropped pistol before his laser fires and pulls the trigger a second earlier. The mission was finally completed, and Kurono, who was missing an arm and a leg in the explosion, returned to Reaper space intact after the countdown. Then the mission scoring started. The rest of the team only had zero points, while Kurono alone got seven points. They realized that only the last hitter would get the points, at which point Kurono curiously asked the black ball. What happens if the score reaches 100? The black ball gave two options. One was to clear the memory to get released. And the second was to choose to resurrect a person. This unbelievable ability makes everyone surprised. Afterward, the black ball sent everyone back to reality. After waking up, Kurono began to test the suit's power, only to see the pan in his hands directly into scrap metal. After coming outside, he started to adapt to the speed provided by the suit again. Under his hard sprint, he could fly several dozen meters in one go, and the transformation of his strength made him go from fear to anticipation, because as a soon-to-be graduate with social phobia, the reality is that Kurono, like most of us, is gradually unable to find the meaning of his existence due to the failure of one interview after another, and the death space mission call, even if every time is nine lives, but also let him have the opportunity to prove himself. So before the third mission started, his eyes became more determined, this time the mission target was the Buddha Starman, and everyone was transported to a museum. The two statues at the entrance caught their attention, and one of the newcomers did not hesitate to pull the trigger on the other statue. As the statues are smashed to pieces, the real Buddhists are awakened by the commotion. Kurono told Kato to retreat with the rest of the group, leaving him alone to fight the mission's target. Relying on the agility bonus provided by the battle suit, he took advantage of the gap revealed when the stone statue attacked him. A fast slide shoveled to the bottom of the statue while pulling the trigger, easily shattering one of the legs of the stone statue. Then he did not panic and aimed the gun at the head of the stone statue and pulled the trigger once again. The Buddha Starman was thus completely turned into a pile of foam, but as he watched the black ball countdown clear, it restarted the next countdown. At the same time, the museum door was suddenly opened in the mission space, and a female team member who had escaped came out bruised and battered. The next second she was no longer moving, making them realize that another monster was inside the museum. The trio cautiously entered the museum, and just as they were looking for the unusual statue, a thousand-handed guanine suddenly launched an attack on Kurono. It knocked his weapon away with a single blow, then countless sharp blades began to attack him wildly, and when Kato came to pull him out, he was already covered in blood. Seeing that Kurono, the strongest fighter, had been destroyed, Kato had no choice but to go into battle himself, but against the ghostly thousand-handed Guanin, Kato was soon at a disadvantage. Watching thousand-handed Guanin approach Kato step by step, Kishimoto, behind him, took the opportunity to shoot. Still, he was dodged instantly by thousand-handed Guanin, and then he easily knocked Kishimoto away. Kishimoto's pistol was also cut off by its sharp blade, and Kato, who had recovered, picked up the handle on his body and flung it with force. Instantly forming a katana, he raised his sword and rushed toward thousand-handed Guanin, but he only hated himself for not having more hands than his opponent, and he was defeated once again. In a life-and-death situation, Kishimoto did not hesitate to block the fatal blow for him. In the last moment of her life, she died after expressing her love to Kato. The grief-stricken Kato once again raised his katana, so it was no surprise that he also experienced the first and last time in his life the 10,000 swords through the heart. Corona watched Kato die in front of him. With one breath left, he exploded, turning on the berserker mode of his battlesuit and leaping toward Thousand-Handed Guanin with all his might. But the next second Thousand-Handed Guanin blocked his attack with his hand. At the moment of crisis, Corona managed to get the gun that fell on the ground with a fake move, and without hesitation, he smashed all of Thousand-Handed Guanin's weapons with one shot. 
He thought he had the victory, but the unreasonable thousand-handed Guanin summoned his master. He saw Buddha shed his shell and burst the entire museum instantly to reveal his true form. Then Buddha put his hands together and Corona was thrown directly onto the roof. Kato threw the weapon to him with his last ounce of strength. Corona got the weapon and kept pulling the trigger, and one of Buddha's arms was smashed under his continuous attacks. He fought to jump into the air, but Buddha also did not talk to him directly swallowed him into the mouth. Just when everyone thought Korono had failed too, he started a frenzied attack inside Buddha's body. Eventually, Buddha was also beaten into the sky mud. Finally, he completed his mission and returned to the death space intact. But behind him, besides not joining the battle companions, he did not see Kato's figure. Kato also failed to appear until the Black Ball's countdown was completely cleared. After watching the Black Ball start to raid him and then seeing Kato's head appear on the death list, Korono's last chance was gone. He couldn't accept this cruel reality, but he could do nothing about it. The only thing he can do now is to keep fighting and completing one mission after another, because only when he has accumulated 100 points can he revive those who have died.